video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hi, I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. And today I thought I would have a look at 10 frugal swaps that you can make, things that you can do that could potentially save you quite a lot of money over the years. So the first one is to stop buying branded groceries or keep them to a minimum anyway, because when you buy a branded grocery, you are paying a lot more because there's been a lot of product development, there's been, there's been a lot of marketing, there's lots of designers involved in the packaging. So you pay a premium for a product that may not be proportionately much better than say the supermarket's own generic brands. And I would always go for a generic brand when it comes to groceries, but also when it comes to things like medication that you can buy over the counter. I remember buying, I think it was period pain pills for one of my daughters years ago, and they were really quite expensive. And I mentioned this to the pharmacist and they said, this is actually for migraine. It's a generic migraine um, cure, if you like. And it's got exactly the same ingredients in as that. And I thought, wow, that's that's good to know. So I bought that instead and it did exactly the same job. So things like that, buy generic, buy generic paracetamol and ibuprofen and that kind of thing, um, buy generic coffee and tea and all of your groceries. If you at least give them a try. I think we are so swayed by the power of advertising and we are sold an image and we really do believe that those things are better quality and taste better and sometimes they are. I'm not saying they're not ever better quality but a lot of the time the, the quality if, the, if it is better it's not really noticeable to you and I you know unless we've got I don't know a wine tasters palette and we're very sophisticated we probably wouldn't know the difference. Having said that, there are exceptions. I love hobnobs, chocolate hobnob biscuits. They're delicious. I always buy Lidl and Aldi own and they're really, I can't tell the difference. However, I did buy, I popped into Tesco's to get some bits and I ended up buying some Tesco's own version of hobnobs and they weren't very good at all. Like I really was quite disappointed. So I'm not saying it's always the case, but it's certainly always worth giving it a try when you're trying to save money. And I think you can save a lot of money over the course of the year by avoiding branded groceries. Number two on my list is to swap out some of your meat meals for vegetarian options or vegan options. And by that, I mean scratch cook some vegetarian food because since it's become very popular and trendy to be vegan or veggie, I have noticed that there's a lot of packaged veggie and vegan meals and they're not they're not cheaper at all. Um, years ago, I was vegetarian. I was a vegetarian for a long time, for about 16 years, and there wasn't anything to buy. You can buy anything. All you could buy was one well, the very odd tinned, not very nice sausage casserole and things like that, veggie sausage casserole. It was really hard to pick up vegetarian alternatives that weren't just textured vegetable protein. So you really had to be creative and make things from scratch. And it's very easy, you know, a lot of um, veggie food is very straightforward, no more difficult than cooking a meat meal from scratch. But, and if you do it from scratch, you can use very simple ingredients like obviously vegetables, um, lots of herbs and spices, pulses, and they're not expensive. So they're, they're healthy as well, much healthier. And there's lots of studies have been done on how vegetarians tend to be healthy and, and get fewer cancers and fewer heart disease, less heart disease and that kind of thing. I was actually part of um, a very early Oxford study and I was looking it up recently actually to see what happened with it because I didn't complete it. I did it for a couple of years and then you know got involved with traveling and stuff so I never finished with it, finished it but in my late teens and early 20s I sent off regular blood samples to some people that were doing experiment, long-term experiment on the health of vegetarians versus meat eaters. Um, and, it, you know, their results are there. To, I'll try and find it and link it below. Um, the results are there to see. And you tend to eat a lot more fibre and and a lot more get a lot more nutrition in your diet. Um, but that's not the case if you buy everything ready, made and processed. So that's one switch that you can do I would say. If you are an avid meat eater and don't want to give up meat then fair enough but you could just replace two meals a week perhaps or even one start with a meat free Monday just to have a little explore and you know it's fun it, trying different types of cooking 
adds a little bit of interest to it, doesn't it? It can get really boring planning meals and cooking meals. I say that as the person that does most of the cooking in this house because Justin just can't cook and isn't very good at it. Um, so, you know, it gets a bit boring sometimes. Doing something different like that adds a level of interest. So I would say that's worth switching out and just doing a couple of meals at least a week where you eat vegetarian. And number three on my list, I've only just learned from Justin's mum. It never occurred to me to do this before, but she uses old fashioned flannelette sheets rather than cotton ones. And they retain so much more heat than cotton sheets do. So that would be another swap that I would suggest doing is swap out your cotton sheets for flannelette sheets. Um, and if you have one on, on the mattress and one above you as well, you're cocooned in a, such a lot of warmth. I stayed over at his mum's house recently and I just could not believe it was so cold outside and I couldn't believe the difference it made getting into a nice softly covered flannelette sheet over the mattress rather than cold cotton and then having another one on top so you really do it just warms you right up you feel like you're in a little pocket of warmth so swap out your cotton sheets for flannelette sheets the next frugal swap is to make and take your own coffee out with you so if you commute to work for example it's really really tempting especially on cold days like we're having at the moment to stop off and get a coffee but if you're trying to be frugal and you want to save lots of money, I know people always say this one about swapping out your coffee, not buying takeout coffee, but you can spend a lot on it. So it's worth considering at least purchasing a flask, a small flask and taking your coffee with you for your journey. And then perhaps you can make one at the office and bring it back with you on the way home as well. So I think that's really worth it. If you go out for the day as well, we always take a flask with us. So we've got coffee on the move and rarely have to buy it out. So swap out your takeout coffee for your own coffee. And the next thing on my list, the next frugal swap would be books. So swap out new books if you've got a habit of buying lots of new books for secondhand or borrowed books. So I'm always going on about using your public library. I really think they're a great resource and I think we'll we'll really miss them. If all of the cost cutting means that our libraries get shut down, we'll be sorry that we'll realise that they're a good resource then when we need our kids to go there to look up some project work or whatever, if we want to take our kids for story time, if we just want to go and peruse the magazines, if we're looking for more obscure books or if we haven't got money to buy lots of books. You know, I'd say support your library and it's much harder for them to close your library down if lots of people use it. So that's another good reason for doing it. But to save money, you know, borrow the books, borrow the books from the library. Um, you can also borrow ebooks on the BorrowBox app. I use it for audiobooks. I've mentioned that in previous videos as well, but you can get ebooks as well for free. Just have to join the library. And the other thing that I do rather than buy a new book is to peruse the charity shops. They are full of second-hand books, normally for about a pound a paperback, and they're not very expensive, and you can find all sorts of books. And if you want a particular title, ask your friends and your family if they've read it, if they've got it, can you borrow it? Um, maybe you could do a book swap with some of your friends so that you can read each other's books rather than constantly buying new ones. I love to read, but it can cost a lot of money to buy books all the time, and I'll be buying two or three a month. So if you want to save money, swap out those new books and buy secondhand or borrow from your library. And before I move on to my next point, I just want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of great classes for those of you who enjoy learning and gaining new skills as I do. And the first 1,000 people who join using the link below can have a one month free trial and that enables you to explore the full Skillshare library for a month. I've done a few classes now and I'm currently looking at ways to improve my writing skills and maybe potentially looking at moving on to creative writing. Some of you will know that I wrote a, a non-fiction book called Extreme Frugality Save Money Like Your Grandma which I really enjoyed writing but it's a different type of writing isn't it and I think you know, I've been writing on the blog for a while, I've been doing some freelance writing, but none of it is fiction. And 
um, I thought I'd explore some of the creative writing courses. But before I show you the one I'm looking at, I'll just show you some of the others that they do. If you're into writing, there's all sorts of courses, all sorts of classes, not just writing, but this is just one I thought I'd pull out. Um, this is one, Beginner's Guide to Creative Blogging, that would have been quite helpful when I started my blog, shoestringcottage.com, because I just made so many mistakes. I just kind of floundered my way along. But, you know, you learn as you go. But it would have been helpful to have a way to kind of start and a bit of expertise to begin with. So that would be good if you're thinking of starting your own blog. And, you know, if you do like writing, blogging is a really good way to begin, I think. Um, and so there are others about screenwriting, poetry, and how you can improve your well-being and creativity. Right, a mystery. Right, a book proposal. And then this one, Creative Writing Masterclass, Start Writing Your Own Stories by Brian Birmingham. This is the one I'm going to be exploring because I think it's a good way to just write your own stories. It's kind of a good way in. I'm not thinking I'm going to be the next JK Rowling or I'm going to publish any fiction. I'm thinking really just as a hobby and a creative pursuit that it might be fun to do that. So that's the one I'm going to be looking at next. So don't forget to click that link below if you fancy exploring the Skillshare library. Moving on. I'm talking about eating out. We don't do it very often. It's very expensive. So what I would say is a frugal swap would be rather than just going out and paying full price for a meal is that you explore the various ways there are to get money off. So if you're going to a particular restaurant, always check the website because quite often if you sign up to a newsletter, you can get a percentage off or they might have offers for people that uh, sign up to their newsletter. So if you know if you go to a particular pizza chain or whatever, that's always worth looking at. The other thing you can do is if you check out moneysavingexpert.com, they point out and highlight lots of different deals that you can get to get money off eating out and going out generally. And one of the things I read about on there was if you purchase a really cheap travel insurance through Compare the Market, even if you've only spent a pound or two on your maybe a single trip travel insurance, you still get the benefits that other people do from maybe buying their car insurance or their house insurance. And one of the benefits is two for one movies and two for one meals for the year after you've purchased your insurance. So that's a really, really good saving. If you like eating out, if you like going to see films, if you get that two for one offer, you can save a lot of money over the course of the year just for buying a single trip travel insurance. There's one more thing you can do for that as well, is that that is to sign up for some mystery shopping sites. Quite a lot of them, the tasks they will give you will be to go out to a restaurant. And it may be that you'll get a free main course. You do have to pay attention when you're in there because you will have to write a little report in order to get your money back. And you usually have to pay in advance. Sometimes they might give you just a free start or a free dessert. Sometimes they'll just give you the, the main course. So just check it out, though, because if you like eating out a lot, you can get good money off by doing mystery shopping, too. And the next one on my list is to swap out fast fashion for slow fashion. And by that, I mean buying second hand. So rather than supporting these huge fashion companies that just churn out loads of mass produced rubbishy clothes that are designed just to last the season and then get thrown away or donated, just go and buy the donated version. So you'll be supporting a charity too. Um, and you can create your own unique and individual style. You don't have to look like everybody else. If you go and buy secondhand, you can go to boot sales as well. You can shop on Vinted online, eBay as well. Both of those enable you to just search out pre-loved clothing as well. So I would say if you want to save lots of money and also have a good environmental impact, Swap out fast fashion for slow fashion. Another frugal swap you could consider is getting rid of your subscriptions to, or maybe you've got a TV package and you're under contract. Once the contract is finished, you could consider maybe investing a free view box or a free sat box and watching things for free. Makes a lot of sense. There are still a lot of programs on there and you could maybe invest in an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku box. For years, we only had a Fire Stick. So um, we watched all sorts of things on the Fire Stick. So it was a really, really good investment. And now we do have a package, but only because we managed to get TV 
and broadband for the same price as we previously just had broadband when we got the new deal. But if that goes up a lot, we'll be going back to the fire stick. So consider other ways of watching TV. You can also get maybe just limit the subscriptions you have. So you might have Netflix, you might have Prime or, you know, some of the other now TV you can get. You know, sometimes you can just sign up for the free trial and then cancel it um, or just restrict yourself. So you only have one at a time. So swap out your expensive TV package for something a little more cheap. And number nine on my list is to air dry your clothing and your laundry rather than using your tumble dryer. And this is definitely becoming more popular now. Um, I had a friend who said she went to try and buy a new era, clothes era for indoors, and they were completely sold out. And I think people with the cost of gas and electricity are looking at alternatives anyway. So if you can possibly line dry outside, then obviously that's the cheapest. Your clothes come in smelling really nice. But, you know, indoors in the winter, and you can have an aero, clothes aero, you can get a heated aero. They don't cost very much to run at all, much, much less than your tumble dryer. So that's another frugal swap you can make. Find other ways of drying your laundry other than just shoving them in the tumble dryer. And finally, I would say if you swap your ready-made meals and your takeaways for 99% home cooked from scratch meals. You will save so much money, but you'll also be healthier. You'll create less packaging and waste and, you know, you get a warm green glow as well. But I know it's difficult for people that don't have a lot of time, but you can batch cook. Maybe on a Sunday you can batch cook things and fill your freezer up and then that's just the same as having a ready meal, but your ingredients will be a lot cheaper. They'll be more nutritious. You'll have fewer um, additives as well. So it's really, really worth swapping out those microwave meals and ready cooked things for a bit of scratch cooking. So those are 10 Fairly easy, I think, frugal swaps you can make if you need to save money. Let me know what yours are in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your frugal swaps and what you've done to save cash over the course of a year. You save quite a lot, don't you? So do share. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe so you know next time I publish something. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.